one baby, it shows a bunch of scalpels like heat targeting and, and locking on to the children, the child's center of mass. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift. I wait. <laughs> also, for those who don't know, I died last time, so we're restarting. <laughs> Where's my death thing? Hold on, the death counter is not even up. Um, but beep, 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 beep. I don't, I don't see Baldur's Gate causing this uproar of, you know, the next ARPG comes out and everyone's frustrated or disappointed and it not being Baldur's Gate. I mean, I feel like a game like Baldur's Gate isn't going. Like, it can be like Dragon Age. All right, not every RPG player is going to lay like Dragon Age. And Dragon Age Origins was a big game when it came out, and I'm not going to say it's, you know, anywhere near the level of Divinity or Baldur's Gate, but I don't know. The whole thing feels like a an overreaction to the, the, the I wouldn't even say the idea, but the concept of a possible outcome that isn't likely to occur. It feels like the same situation as like somebody getting apprehensive about a Bethesda game coming out when what what did Bethesda specifically do to rock the industry I mean they made their own unique thing if anything it's just gonna be Larian is known for this type of RPG and if you want this type of RPG go to Larian where if you want a Bethesda game go to Bethesda you don't go to Obsidian for Bethesda games you go to Obsidian for Obsidian games we need to tell to die <laughs> to the rules of combat to start I, we did that at the last stream, though. Literally what I died to at the start of the last stream was, was a lurker. Or the end of the last stream was a lurker. And then I got really hungry. Oh, no. We went we went down two of 120 frames. I'm so sorry, Trey. You can't see anything now. You, you jest, but that's my brain. If anything goes wrong on stream, I'm just super upset. <laughs> there, there's no... You can't... You can literally ask Shad in in his chat how often I'll I'll like doom spiral in in VC after streams are done <laughs> if something goes even slightly wrong. It's it's pretty consistent. It's why I've I've like I've I've said on stream before I'm like I. It's, I've gone from wanting to collab to like preferring solo streams, except for very specific cases because I'm less stuff goes wrong when it's one person. <laughs> when it's one person, less things can go wrong. Everything's going smoothly now. I, I was actually unsure of what to do tonight, though. I was kind of like, do I? play Jack and Daxter? Do I play FF14? I have a bunch of stuff I want to talk about. So I want to talk about Baldur's Gate. And I want to talk about the nightmare I have, which I still haven't done. <laughs> which was essentially I woke up to a DM from all I... Nobody in, specific, in particular. I woke up, opened my phone, was on uh, was on like I think I was on Twitter and it's weird that it was Twitter because I don't use Twitter to push my stream anymore, really. I don't care about Twitter. <laughs> um, <laughs> I woke up, had a DM, noticed I lost a lot of followers. And the DM was just from someone who I really respected. <laughs> and the message was, you don't have what it takes. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't have it. It was the most vague, non-specific, doubt <laughs> like catalyst yeah don't don't bring in twitter users dude twitter users are insane people are in un unhinged unhinged on twitter i almost walked off of this ledge <laughs> can i make that jump ah I remember having the dream of, of a Minecraft build once. I rambled about it a bit in general. I saw I'll do it. It was actually making me think like, man, I really need to get a Minecraft server going. <laughs> Set one up with the expectation to disappoint us. 
Okay, bro, that's what I do all the time. What are you talking about? You know how many stream ideas I've had? That's like, hey, we're going to do this tonight. And it's like, man, this is not working out at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many streams we've done that have turned out like that? <laughs> I was thinking, like, it, once I get done, once I beat this with a uh, no deaths, I think a no damage run would be fun. <laughs> I I don't I don't know how fun that would be to watch, but I think a no damage run would be really fun. So in the movie, I don't know what the context is. A building's falling over, and like the top of it tips, and I guess the top was the maternity ward. So one, two, three, I'm gonna say four, five babies just fall out of the building. The flash looks up, everything slows down, and the camera pans across every child. And every child has an has its own unique emergent quick time event. One baby, it shows a bunch of scalpels like heat targeting and, and locking on to the children, the child's center of mass. And then it, it pans over to another child across the, the ozone layer, whatever it's whatever. And there's a picture of coffee that also like locks onto this child and just throws hot fluid at this baby. I don't understand. It was too goofy to be something that I, I, I was engaged in. I was I was just laughing too hard. Yeah, fuck that baby in particular. <laughs> Realistically, super speed will murder you immediately. <laughs> I, I, this, that's one thing that I think the boys excels at. I, I hate the boys. Um, I genuinely do not like The Boys. I think it's a terrible, terrible show that I couldn't stop watching. Hello. Hi, Donko. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. I hope your night's going well. My day did go well. Fantastic. I am a Jack and Daxter fan. Did you play them when, like, when did you play them? Did you play them when you were uh, young or did you find them, like, later? But I, I've got a huge nostalgic link with these games. I, I played Jack 1 every day after school uh we we were too poor to afford a memory card for my ps2 so i would come home from school get to snowy mountain and then my mom would be like turn it off you have to go to sleep <laughs> well you're not a real jack and daxter fan i got the first one on release day i don't think i knew what release days were when i was younger look games just existed they appeared at walmart beneath the tv that was hanging on the thing for anyone who likes the boys <laughs> that's okay i'm not about to say i'm not about to do what i normally do and go you just have bad taste all right the boys has merits it, it, there, are, there are a lot of good things about that show i like it but i like it in the way that it's a train wreck. <laughs> like, it's a good show. I'm not gonna sit here and be that that um, out of touch or like arrogant in my own opinion. I, I The important thing for a piece of media is that it's entertaining. But if you like The Boys, that's fine. The Boys is a, is a, is a fun TV show. I, I, I enjoyed season one, I enjoyed season two. I think I watched three, but I don't know. It was kind of forgettable. Um, I like it. I, I like what they did with the superheroes. I like that they took into account a lot of physics information in regards to just what happens if the Flash runs into you type stuff, which I know is like the opening episode. But seeing that sort of focus is cool. I haven't watched The Boys. I played them when I was little. Fantastic. What's your favorite one? There's no wrong answers. <laughs> The boys is good. If you, it, I don't like normal superhero things. I, I like more grounded, sort of tales of superpowered mutant people. <laughs> um, so like, I, I, I really liked Logan. I liked, I liked Captain America: Winter Soldier. Um, both of those are grounded more than the rest, and they're both super fun and great. Deadpool's good too, but the boys kind of, it. It tries too hard to make everybody an anti-hero. You played that one. Get out of my ship. Jack 2 is super good. Oh my god. I think Jack 2... Oh, 
I don't know if I can pick a favorite. As much as I want to sit here and be like, that's the, that's the wrong one. The first one's better. Then they went down this weird dark path that got super mature and edgy because they saw Shadow of Hedgehog and Ratchet and Clank doing it. Which is true. But it's like, I, I feel like it's a... Granted, the games weren't written at the same time. But I'm I'm very confident that Jack 2 was nailed as a natural progression. It, I, I believe Jack 2. I believe that Jack 2 is the next step, which is the important thing. I, okay, I need to finish my thought on the boys. Media is supposed to be entertaining. And if it's entertaining and not bad and not annoying, well, that's redundant. If it's not annoying, and it's in its presentation which would mean it's bad then it did it it did its job and that's what the boys did i enjoyed the boys for the mess that it is i just shadow the hedgehog have to exist because he's cool if you ask a sonic fan he's got really deep lore and he's actually a a really well thought out character that doesn't just rack the slide on an mp5k for some reason which doesn't exist on that weapon. I used to not care for Jack 3 all that much, but I replayed it, beat it a few months ago. I really like it now. Jack 3 is super good. It gets a lot of... People give... I, I feel... I, okay, I, I'm going to compare Jack and Daxter fans to Fallout fans. I feel like Jack and Daxter fans do what Fallout fans do to Fallout 3 to Jack 2 and 3. Where it's like, yes, you, you played these games when you were younger. That's cool. Like, you played the first game and you really liked it. But is Jack 2 really that bad? Like, is it? I think it's good. Mechanically, it's sound. I mean, yeah, if you don't like it because the story is more mature and it goes in a, into a darker path, that's fine. That's fine. But I feel like it gets a lot of hate. And Jack 3 gets a lot of hate, too, for not completely invalid reasons. I mean, the development cycle between 2 and 3 was a year. So there's a lot of reuse, reusable assets that are reused. And there's a lot of obvious areas that are completely copy paste which we'll we'll take a look at whenever uh we get there because i i need to finish jack 2 on stream again and then i need to finish jack 3 uh because we never did that so the jack 2 playthrough will probably be normal since um i don't know we did jack 1 on youtube a long time ago so there's already a jack 1 playthrough uh there's a jack 2 i think playthrough as well that we did jack 2 is a masterpiece i think it's great i think it's it, it fixes a lot of the issues with the movement jack one's movement isn't isn't the best it, it feels good but it's got weird delays in places so like if i go a a i i just jump once but if i go a a i can jump and that's the timing so a a a a a a like there's a weird timing to Jack 1. I played Jack 2 all the way through over about a year ago, loved every second. It's so good. Jack 2 is great. It, it does have difficulty spikes that are kind of eh. Like, I, I can't I can't really defend some of the difficulty spikes in Jack 2 because there are some. There are some really absurd ones that I do not understand. Um, and I feel like that's resolved in Jack 3. But except for the turret mission. Which ones is you talking? You're talking about the uh, metalhead uh, eggs on the mining facility, right? The rail one? Ah, uh, the one around the mining facility that has no checkpoints. <laughs> that one, the terrible one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jack 2's biggest flaw is the checkpoint system. I think that's really all you need to say about it. There's a lot of points in Jack 2 where you die and you go back two missions worth of progress. It feels like Jack 1 is the is probably one of the best platformers from the ps2 era but i will say jack 2 like refines its controls it refines it to a point that i think it should be acknowledged more but i never hear anybody talk about how much better jack 2 feels in comparison to one because all everyone focuses on with jack 2 is how much darker it is and it's jack got older and he's in a new crazy world like yeah cool whatever like how's the mechanics feel though and like jack 2 is still a platformer i think people complain about jack 2 is the tone shift difficulty and checkpoints i think that's like that's a sign that there's not a lot else wrong with the game if jack didn't evolve with the times we wouldn't have jack 3 probably everyone says the dock mission is the hardest but it's not that bad i hate the dock mission just sucks because it's unforgiving it's not a hard mission it, it's it's an overwhelming mission 
which people mistake for difficulty where it, it's kind of um it's kind of a similar scenario as to the ruined sentinels in jack uh, jack 2 in dark souls 2 where you walk in the room and it's a 3v1 fight and the fight itself isn't the difficult part if you know how to maintain awareness of things off of your screen. Younger brother is actually building me a PC. I've talked to him about building it for a long time. Fucking sick. What are you getting? Thank you for selling out though. I hope you stick around and enjoy the streams. We usually do FF14, but uh, on Fridays we're doing Jack and Dex. Can't wait to see FF14. I love to RuneScape growing. Bro, I play RuneScape all the time. Oh, okay. Well, fuck me, I guess. Play RuneScape all the time. It was my it was my thing. Like every day after school, I would come home and I'd play it until like 2 a.m. with my friend, and we'd sit on the phone because there was no like. God damn! I just about aged myself. I almost said because there was there were no video chat services back then. That's not. <laughs> um, both of our internet connections were so terrible. Wait, hold on. Is there a texture issue there? Oh, there is. Look, you can see outside the world. Hold on. Look, there it is. Aha! You can see outside the world. Right here. There's a texture issue. Um, there's a... There, but our internet was so slow because we lived in the middle of nowhere that we couldn't uh we couldn't do video chat and like play runescape at the same time <laughs> so we would just sit on the phone we just like mine or chop down trees eventually we ran into a a, a situation where we were grinding our uh we were grinding something but we had to like get bowstrings so we were up near the the honeybees above falador up to the left of falador in the members area right below wildy i think and we were making runs from beehives uh to the bank with bowstring for my runescape people out that know what the hell i'm talking about at all <laughs> i loved runescape growing up that's the closest i've gotten to an mmo i beat ff uh, 10 and ff5 for the first time last year loved them so much very interested in the rest of the games 14 especially the mmo aspect is just scary well good i have good news uh ff14 no jukes this time i've, I've learned like where the path is that triggers that behavior <laughs> um ff14 has a free trial up to level 60 with no limit on playtime you get all of A Realm Reborn, which is the base game, and all of the first expansion, which is Heaven's Word. That is like 200 hours of uh, story and just content there for you to enjoy, not to mention all of the side quests and everything else. Highly recommend it. You can make as many characters as you want. If you check it out, uh, join us on stream. I have no problem with people joining me while I'm live. FF14 story is great, though. I think we cried like 20 plus times on stream at this point. It's really crazy when you're doing 100% runs of this game, how generous Naughty Dog were with the power cells. You can bypass Boggy Swamp and the temple. You don't have to do them. You don't have to even know they exist, which is how Collectathon should be. Like, it should be generous enough so that it's like, when you're going for the completionist route, like, it should be satisfying, but it shouldn't be annoying. Like, that's one thing Jack and Daxter know. Um, that Jack, Jack 2 and Jack 3 kind of missed the memo on which is like it's fun to do 100 percent in in jack one it's genuinely fun i i love getting everything but jack two and jack three like you you kind of just need a guide to find a lot of the the power cells they're not in intuitive places some of them are just in weird like oh it's in this corner behind the bazaar or like there's one in jack three i think that's in the back left corner of part of Haven City and it there's nothing there it's just tucked into a corner that you're never going to go to it's like why like your collectible should never go in a place that the player is not going to wander into it's why i think breath of the wild um explicitly has a has a design problem at its core and why tears of the kingdom also has that same problem there's nothing guiding the player anywhere um and that's not to say that there isn't something guiding the player to points of interest as there is there's a really smart development strategy that nintendo used to do just that and it's every hill in the game uh game makers toolkit did a really good video on it is essentially a triangle and when you come up over the triangle you start seeing towers and little uh little points of interest that catch your eye but you see other hills too so you want to go over those hills and see what's over the next hill so you're explicitly being guided to explore and 
go to areas of interest that are within eyeshot. But with the Korok seeds, a collectible should be in a location that makes the player go, there's got to be something back there. 